Finding the difference between a Gila trout and Apache trout was very difficult for me. Hi, what's going on friends? My name is Brandon Ringstad and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic creatures with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. Please stick around to the very end to hear about this month's charity opportunity. Today we're going to be discovering the cold mountainous river water of the Gila Trout. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Uncaricus Gile are known as Gila Trout. It is so nice working with a member of the Uncaricus genus again. I used to study Salmonids and Trout in college. Even though I had not seen this species before, it feels like an old friend. They are named after the Gila River that runs in Arizona and New Mexico. Sorry, they don't have a funny scientific name. Let's discover the range and habitat preferences for the Gila Trout. Where can we find them? They are found in several mountain streams and rivers in Arizona and New Mexico. This is a small range for a trout species. Trout and salmon are typically found all over and moving around, not the Gila. They like staying near home and only move away by roughly a mile. What about habitat? They love being in mountainous streams with rivers where the water temperature rarely gets above 21 degrees Celsius or 69 degrees Fahrenheit. These are rocky streams with fast moving water near the riparian zone. That is a section of a stream that mingles with a forest or a group of trees. They live between 1650 and 2000 meters in elevation. These freshwater rivers are cold clear and hard to reach. They can live in water with a slope grade of 6% to 12%. 12% is steep with fast moving water and sometimes boulders or logs in the water. Gila trout like swimming in riffles and ponds of these water systems. That also means that the space is limited. These bodies of water fluctuate with the seasons. For this painting, I'm not going to change the background from my reference photo. I like how the photo is, so there is no need to change it. It makes me want to go out fishing. All my paintings start with a line drawing that was transferred over from tracing paper. I like using tracing paper just because it's thin, I can erase well on it, and I, that way I'm not erasing on my canvas and making a huge mess. I take this tracing paper. Then I use transfer paper to transfer that image, that's pretty messy honestly, onto my canvas. I block in some loose brush strokes for the first layer. This helps me map out the colors and values. Once this is done, I move on to the modeling phase. This is where I set my darks and midtones. I move on to smaller brushes and try to get simple textures in this phase. The last phase is detail phase. I can do my highlights and fine details in this painting. I am concerned with how many tiny dots there are on this fish. Let's discover physical appearance and behaviors next. What are we looking for when identifying Gila trout? These are a relative to Apache trout. They look very similar. Both are similar in size, color, and spot pattern. The difference is the size of spots and the addition of black dots on the eyes of the Apache. Once you know what to look for, it is easier, but I still had a hard time. Gila trout are a small yellow to gold trout with small spots above the lateral line and sometimes have a pink stripe below the lateral line. They are sometimes a silver or metallic gold with tiny black spots above the lateral line as well as on the fins. They have a classic salmonid body style. Torpedo body, large dorsal fin, adipose fin, flat caudal fin, anal fin, pelvic fins, pectoral fins, and have a blunt face with a big mouth. During breeding season, the males change their body form to attract a mate. This increases the bright gold and adds a layer of depth to the pink flanks. 
This change in appearance is known as sexual dimorphism. It is a rapid change in appearance between males and females. They have a yellow or gold coloration behind the gill cover and may also have a yellow cutthroat pattern under their chin. A cutthroat pattern is a pattern of color that goes from one side of the head to the other along the lower jaw. It looks like somebody took paint or a knife and cut under the chin. Some adults maintain their par marks as they grow up and some lose them when they become adults. Par marks are markings on a juvenile fish to aid in camouflage. Salmonids have a life stage known as par with two R's. They grow to be an average of 11.8 inches but have been recorded at 21 inches in total length. We can take a total length because there is no fork in the tail. This measures from the snout to the edge of the tail. These fish are small because they live in small areas of water. If the fish were too large, then they might get stuck in the rocks or might not have enough water to cover themselves in drier years. Gila trout live between four and 10 years in the wild. Some females may have two to three spawning cycles in their lifetime. Unlike some salmon where they die after spawning, these fish don't usually do that. They spawn in spring when the water warms. This time frame changes depending on the altitude of the fish. Females build large nests known as reds. This nest is dug out of the gravel and is roughly four centimeters deep with one meter wide. Sometimes the red is half the width of the stream that they are in. This gives you an idea of the size of the stream that they can live in. Females choose the largest or strongest males to mate with. Males, on the other hand, choose several females to mate with. Sometimes a small young male wants to mate early in life. It will hide and wait until a big male is distracted or spawning to sneak into the red. These small males are known as sneaker males, and they're so sneaky. Gila trout typically spend most of the year alone or in socially distanced groups. The males are territorial and will fight off smaller males. Sometimes they will even fight off females, which seems weird. Don't you want them hanging around getting to know you before spawning season? Let's move on to our next segment of the adventure. What do Gila trout eat and how are they doing? Gila trout eat mostly insects. They are insectivores. They eat terrestrial and aquatic invertebrates. On occasion, they will feed on small trout or small fish. If you're a fisherman, you know that salmonids feed in the early morning and early evening. This fish will come to the surface and feed on insects that are near the surface. It is a perfect time for catching some fish. So how are the Gila trout doing? The IUCN Red List has them listed as endangered. They were critically endangered since 1950s. There was a fishing ban on all Gila and Apache trout from 1950s to the 2000s. Now there is a regulated catch permits on some of these populations. Scientists are implementing the help of hatcheries to release fish into the streams. They release the fish at the same size and stage as the wild fish. This way they don't outcompete the wild fish. Their biggest threats are sedimentation of streams, drought, runoff, grazing, and forest fires. Sedimentation is the addition of fine particulate into the water. It is usually dirt or dust. Most people don't think about dirt being a problem, but it sticks to their gills and stops respiration. These are fascinating fish and beautiful ones too. I want to see many generations of people experiencing them. We can do our part. I am happy that they're on the rise. Let's move to the last segment of our adventure. What was my personal experience with the Gila trout and how is my painting coming along? I really like how my painting is coming along. I am moving onto the detail phase of it. Here I use small brushes and get into my highlights. I use titanium white to add complexity and contrast to the painting. 
I work in small sections and use my reference photo as much as possible. I don't need to copy my photo exactly, I need to get close and get the general feel. It is like a big game of spot the difference. I let the highlights stand off of the canvas so it can capture real world light. I use small sections of the painting so I can move on when a section is done. What was my encounter with the Gila Trout? I was visiting a friend in Arizona. We went to the Odyssey to look at some cool animals. I am always down to see swimming animals. This was the Rivers of America section. It housed Apache and Gila Trout in a large tank with rocks and fallen trees. I thought I got photos of both Apache and Gila Trout, but I only got Gila Trout. I loved how I was looking up at the fish from below. It makes it dynamic. These fish were doing what trout do best. They swim in place or slowly cruise the tank. They wave their fins and move slowly. All trout I have seen do this when relaxing. The tank had a slight current to it. It was not stationary. It was doing a great job replicating the constant movement of a stream. I am impressed with the aquarium. They did a lot of research and development when building their exhibits. I love the gold colors of the trout species. I was so excited to see a salmonid species down there. I took several photos and had to decide the best photo for you. I wanted to capture the cold, clear river feeling with the rocks, fallen trees, and moving water. I wanted this painting to inspire you to go out and explore your local water systems. I wanted to capture the majestic and regal wilderness of this gold, glittery trout. The Gila Trout. There we have it, this painting is finished, and boy was that a lot of tiny little dots. But I really like how it turned out. I didn't change the composition too much, I don't think it needed it, and honestly I really like how it turned out. Please consider subscribing, liking, ringing the notification bell to be notified when I post new content. These videos do take some time to put together. This month I am supporting the Aoki Foundation. So Steve Aoki is a fellow content creator here on YouTube. He just got into the Pokemon community. Since, so since this is the 25th anniversary of Pokemon, he's, he's raising awareness and he's raising funds for autism and mental health. Him and 18 other Poketubers are getting together, doing a collaboration, and raising funds for this. I'm going to be supporting this foundation. If you enter and you go to his website, I'll leave a link in the description. If you go to his website and you, uh, and you donate a minimum of $10, you could win a limited edition poster with him and the other content creators on it. There's only going to be 36 of these posters made in the world. I, I like doing the best that I can to help the, my community and people who are affected with autism or mental health. It also is a big benefit for me if I can help and raise awareness about the Pokemon community. It's been a part of my life since I was about five years old, and I don't think I'm ever going to change. Did you know that portions of all of my sales goes towards charity? It's true. So when I make sales, I take a portion of all of my sales and I give it to charity during that month. This allows me to help my world and help the community that has helped me. I really, I, f I try and find um, causes that are close to my heart. So each month I try and find a new charity that I can help. So by supporting this community, you're not only supporting myself, you're supporting charity as well, but you're also supporting another local business, my print shop. So I use Feather and Fox Print Company on Whidbey Island. They're wonderful people. They have great, great quality. And so you're, you're also helping them as well as myself. Any help? would be greatly appreciated. You can, you can request prints 
or originals by email or on my website. Thank you for supporting this community. Spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon, and I will see you in our next adventure.